Hello physics students, this is Mr. Stanerson, and in this overview I'm going to identify some of the key aspects of the conservation of energy and how to use kinetic and potential energy together to find answers for some problems, um, including some height and some velocity type problems. So back to this beginning part, remember to look carefully through the quest. I'll put a couple other videos out specific to some quest problems to help you along the way and reach out if you have some questions. Thanks a lot. We'll be taking a look at some review quick. And one of the big things is this idea of conservation of energy. Hopefully this concept isn't very new and you've studied this in some other science classes, but basically the idea is that total energy in a system needs to stay the same um, before and after. And energy can't be created or destroyed. Um, and so energy might change forms from one type to another, but the total energy in the system maintains um, what it was before. So what we need to look at is a system like this diver who starts at the height of a platform and falls into a little bucket of water, their total energy will always maintain the same amount. And so in the very beginning, when he's at the very top, all of his energy is potential, all 15,000 joules of it, his total energy is therefore 15,000 joules. And I know that because it's the stored up energy based on his height off the ground. And as he falls down, he's losing some height, but some of that potential energy is transferring into kinetic. These totals, the potential and the kinetic added together, will still equal the 15,000, even as we get more and more kinetic and less and less potential. What the higher kinetic numbers mean is that he's actually going at a higher speed because remember kinetic energy has velocity in it, so one half mv squared. So the more kinetic energy component of their total energy, the higher their speed is until maybe right before they hit the water, the height is zero and all of their energy has transferred from potential into kinetic. That is one way that we can visualize this idea of transferring between these two, but the total energy always remains the same. All right, so you're going to be doing some simulations, kind of like this one, where you're going to be looking at some charts of energy where they're going to show you at different parts along the path where there's kinetic and where there's potential energy. This one is showing a greater amount of kinetic energy, so therefore I know it's going to be at one of these lower spots on the track because if I was at section one, the potential energy part of this graph would be greater because there's more stored up energy. It might be it's still moving, he might be going and coasting over the first hill, but a majority of his energy is probably stored energy. Therefore, if I'm looking at a graph like this where most of the energy is kinetic, it would have to be at one of these lower spots. All right, so be aware of that and also be kind of um, working through some of the simulations to answer a few more in-depth questions with conservation of energy. And then we'll be taking a look at some examples, <coughs> excuse me, like um, knowing that if, a height, if the ball is dropped from the same height on a different ramps, the shape of the ramp is less important than the height that is dropped from as to how far up it's going to go on the next hill. Um, and they should, if there was no friction, it should always return to its initial height because the stored potential energy turns to kinetic at the bottom and then it will turn back into potential as the ball rolls up to the other side. So that transfer of energy between kinetic and potential is something we're going to take a close look at as well. So all right, so when we're solving problems, I usually like to have kind of like a little chart here that shows what equations we're going to be tapping into. And then I'm going to look closely at the path that they're asking about and what type of energy is going to be at the position that they're talking about. So here it says, what is the velocity of one kilogram marble at point A? So I'm going to look really carefully. Okay, point A is right here. Initially, the marble starts here. And it looks like it starts from rest. Okay, that's another key assumption that we're making here. Um, so if that's the case, then there is no initial kinetic energy because the velocity is zero. So all of the initial energy is stored potential, mass times gravity times height. However, as it falls, it turns into kinetic, some potential still, at the bottom is all kinetic, and now as we go around the loop, 
We're gaining potential again until right at point A, we have a mix, some potential and some kinetic. So on this side, we need to keep these two terms, and now we can substitute in what we know. If the mass is one kilogram, I'll put a one in for that. 9.8 is the acceleration of gravity. And then at point A, um, we know the height is different. So initially it started at 100 meters, but then at point A, we're at 70. So that's why it's important to know where that is. And then we're solving for the final velocity. Once I substitute those in, I solve for VF. Remember to take my square root. And I end up with about 24.2 meters per second. If you're getting something different, double check your math. A lot of times people forget to take the square root. Um, so just double check that you're, that you're rearranging correctly and remember to do that math. All right, um, one last one. When we take a look at like a 50 gram pole vault, or kilogram pole vaulter and their initial speed of eight meters per second going over a bar, the horizontal component of the velocity is 1.2 meters per second. How high is the jump? So here we are starting at the horizontal surface and they're going up in the air gaining potential energy. So therefore the initial potential is zero, but we have some initial kinetic energy. At the top, they have a combination of potential and kinetic. And what we're looking for is how high is the jump. So we're really gonna solve for this horizontal, or this H here, this height. So I'm gonna substitute in what I know, but here's a key thing. Notice how mass is in all the terms. So I could factor this out on this side, and then it end up on both, and that means I could even cancel. So if you see mass on all the terms, you could even cancel that out. So I don't even need to use the 50 kilograms in this problem, pretty slick. All right, now I'm gonna substitute in the other values that I know. I'm gonna have the height, um, the initial velocity, solving for the height, and this 1.2 is that horizontal speed over the bar. That squared, remember to square your um, answer on the other side as well. I should end up with a height of about 3.19 meters. All right. All right. So um, we're going to be doing a couple different direct measurements to, uh, in this one. Um, and what we're always going to be looking for is this idea of conservation of energy.